Let's face it, life on Earth is hard, especially for an unborn, so you need every bit of help you can get. Way before a newborn comes forth, its parents are already hard at work to protect them. They build nests, create shelters, bury, carry and guard the eggs, all to protect their offsprings. Let's see how some animals ensure the survival of their babies even before they are born. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Sea turtles are among the most well-known reptiles on Earth. They spend most of their lives in water, but once in a while they do return to land. What for? To lay their eggs. After mating at sea, female sea turtles migrate thousands of kilometers to find a safe spot. Some females return to the same beach where they hatched. Ascension Island, a South Atlantic tiny spot of land 1600 kilometers from the nearest landmass, Africa, is a prime destination for green sea turtles. These turtles swim from the rich Brazilian coast over 2000 kilometers away, all the way to here, and no one understands precisely why or even how. You'd think that once here, the hard part of the journey is done, but no. These incredible mothers now have to continue their journey on land. During the night, the turtles get beached and slowly move to a nesting site. It's not as easy as it sounds because sea turtles breathe much harder on land due to their body weight pressing hard on their lungs. Once they reach the top of the beach, where the sand is humid enough but the waves won't reach, the turtles start digging. They then lay up to 140 eggs, which they bury under the sand, a process that takes about 2 hours. 10 weeks later, all the eggs hatch simultaneously and the hatchlings make their way to the sea. Grunion are small, sardine-sized fish found only off the coast of California, USA and Baja California, Mexico. They look like regular fish and don't appear to be out of the ordinary except for their mating ritual. During very high tides, the females come up onto the sandy beaches where they dig their tails into the sand to lay their eggs. The male then wraps himself around the female to deposit his sperm. The male then returns to the sea, but the female remains for another 20 minutes or so. When the tides retreat, the grunion eggs, up to 3000 from each mating couple, remain on the beach under the sand. For the next 10 days, the grunion eggs remain hidden and at the next set of high tides, they hatch and the young grunion are washed out to sea. One of the weirdest frogs alive is the Suriname toad. It looks like a leaf, is completely flat, has tiny eyes, no teeth and no tongue. The grey shape in this image is the Suriname toad. But if you think this is the weird part, no, you're wrong. Through evolution, this frog developed an original way to care for its unborn. It carries them on its back in small pockets that form in the skin. Here's how this happens. When mating, the partners rise from the floor and flip through the water in arcs. During each arc, the female releases 3 to 10 eggs, which get embedded in the skin on her back by the male's movements. After implantation, the eggs sink into the skin and form pockets over a period of several days, eventually taking on the appearance of an irregular honeycomb. The embryos develop through to the tadpole stage inside these pockets, eventually emerging from the mother's back as fully developed toads. Before we continue, I'd like to ask you one thing. This channel has no sponsors, so if you enjoy the content I make, please consider supporting these videos by becoming a patron. You can check out my Patreon page by clicking here or find the link in the description. Ok, now we can move on to the next fact. Even the biggest and toughest animals have enemies, especially when they're young. You'd think that the 6 meter long, 1 ton saltwater crocodile is an exception, but no they're just as vulnerable. Smaller reptiles and rats steal and eat their eggs and apex predators like pythons and eagles will hunt the hatchlings. But they are not completely defenseless. They have their mom around to protect them. The female saltwater crocodile exhibits a remarkable level of maternal care. 
The female selects the nesting site and both parents will defend the nesting territory. This nest, holding up to 60 eggs, is a mound of mud and vegetation, usually measuring nearly 2 meters long and half a meter high. When the time comes, she excavates the nest in response to yelping calls from the hatchlings and even gently rolls eggs in her mouth to assist hatching. The female will then carry the hatchlings to water in her mouth and remain with the young for several months. The Mallee Fowl is a ground-dwelling Australian bird about the size of a chicken. They are noted for their special care of the nest and complete lack of parental care after the chicks hatch. The males have the job of building and maintaining the nest and maintain a temperature of 33 to 34 degrees Celsius. They start off by scraping a hole 3 meters across and 1 meter deep. They fill it with organic material and cover it with sand, sticks and leaves, creating a half a meter high mound. When rain falls, the water encourages the material to decay, a chemical process which gives off heat. Temperatures can reach up to 60 degrees and the decaying material acts as a radiator for the mound above. By the way, this building takes more than half a year, so it's truly a hard work. The Mali fowl checks the temperature by extending its tongue into the egg chamber. Once the chicks hatch, it takes them up to 15 hours to exit the mound, after which they disappear into the scrubs and begin their lives. When it comes to nests in extreme places, the grey gull is certainly in a top position. For many years, it was a mystery as to where this bird breeds because no coastal colonies had been identified. Then in the 1970s, it was discovered that the grey gull nests in one of the driest and hottest places in the world, the Atacama Desert. As to why these birds come here to nest, the answer is simple. This hot and arid environment has very few predators and is relatively safe for the breeding gulls. Their nests are thus just a scrape in the sand, but this predator-free environment comes with a cost. Parents have to take turns to make the round trip to the sea, which can be as far as 100 kilometers away. Plus, temperatures can reach up to 50 degrees Celsius during the day, so being a grey gull parent is certainly no cakewalk. The giant waterbug is the last animal we'll talk about today. These insects, like the Suriname frog, also carry their young on their backs. A female waterbug can lay 150 eggs that she deposits on the male's back. In this species, the female then leaves and it's up to the male to care for the eggs. And it does a pretty good job. The pools and ponds in which giant waterbugs live contain too little oxygen, so the male kinda dances for its babies. It swims near the surface to a branch or rock and moves its legs continuously to ensure oxygen circulation to the eggs. In about three weeks, the eggs hatch and the bug's fatherhood is over. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.